Hey everybody, God bless you. Fred Crop coming to you from the healing rooms here. Hey, have you ever wondered how do I overcome sin? What can I do? I seem to have this struggle going on in me. Well, the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 6 gives us some insights that I think are very helpful to us understanding our relationship to sin and how we can overcome sin. So I'm going to just read a few highlighted verses from this chapter, and then I want to give you nine different things that I see that will help you and I to be overcomers when it comes to sin. He begins the chapter by saying this. He says, what shall I say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not, or God forbid. Then he says this, how shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Here's, he goes on to say a few verses later, he says, For if we have been united in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurre resurrection, knowing that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. Then he says this a few verses later. He says, Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive unto God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Then he says this, Do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey its lusts. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as those being alive from the dead. Here he goes on and says this, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. Now, being under law or under grace, under law, you had to overcome sin in your own strength and power. But under grace, God gives you the grace you need to be able to overcome sin. He goes on and says this, Do you not know that whoever you present yourself as slaves to obey, you are the one, one slave of whom you obey, whether to sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness? He says this, For just as you presented your members as slaves to uncleanness and of lawlessness leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for holiness. And then he ends with this. He says, But now having been, past tense, set free from sin and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness and the end is everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let's pray and let's ask the Holy Spirit to speak to us through these passages. Father, we thank you, Lord, that we don't have to be a slave of sin. We ask you to speak to us, Holy Spirit, Teach us, show us how we are now in Christ Jesus, overcomers by the blood of the Lamb, by the work of the cross, and the help of the Holy Spirit. We pray that in Jesus' name, amen and amen. How many of you can say amen to that? Well, here's some of the insights that I see in this passage. First off, grace is not an excuse uh, or a cover-up. For sin. In other words, grace is not a license to sin. Grace is not saying, well, you can just sin and grace, grace is going to cover it. That's not the purpose of grace. Grace is not here to cover up your sin. It's to empower you to overcome sin. In this passage, Paul informs us that we are actually dead to sin. Well, we're dead to sin. When did that happen? Well, the Bible says, he goes on there, to tell us that when we were baptized, how many of you were baptized in water? Well, when you were baptized in water, the Bible says our old man died, and then we were resurrected into becoming a new man. That's the whole purpose of uh, baptism, or the point of baptism. It's not just a, uh, a, a activity we do. It's actually a symbol and a power that happens to us. We're standing in the water. We go down. We die with Jesus. We're buried. Our old man is left in the grave. We come up and we're now a new creation in Christ Jesus. We come into newness of life is what the Bible says. So when we were baptized, the old man died and the new man came into being. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Then it says this, when Jesus was raised from the dead. Now, come on, now this is like Sometimes hard to get your head around, right? When Jesus was raised from the dead, we were raised up with him. In fact, Paul says in Ephesians, we're not only raised with him, we're now seated with him in heavenly places, doing what? Ruling and reigning in life. In fact, in Romans, 
It tells us this. It says, those who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. So you died to sin, but you now have been risen from the risen with Christ from the dead. You're seated with Christ, and now you can rule over your life, not have your life rule over you. Then Paul brings this out. He talks about this thing of being a slave. He said, you're now no longer slaves to sin. You see, sin will make you a slave. As you give yourself to sin, then it's going to bring you into some, some of you know what I'm talking about right now, that you're caught up in some sin and you become a slave to that sin. Well, that's because you don't know the truth. You died to sin with Christ. You've been resurrected into righteousness. And so we need to now acknowledge, and I want you to acknowledge it right now, I died to sin. Sin does not have dominion over me anymore. So we were born into sin in Adam, but the Bible says we've been born again into Jesus, into righteousness. Here's another thing it says in this passage, and that is that we are to reckon ourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive into Christ. The word reckon there is an accounting term in the Greek. It means, you know, you when you, you when you reconcile your checkbook, you A plus B equals C, right? And so here's what Paul's trying to say. He's saying this. He says that when Jesus died, when you accept him, you died with him. Equals you're now dead. You're, and now obviously you're sitting here saying, well, wait a minute, I'm not dead. No, but your old man, the old sin nature, the person you were before has now died with Christ. It's dead. And then when Jesus rose, the, the Bible says that we rose with him equals that we're now alive in God and alive unto God to do works of righteousness. Another thing I see in this passage is that whoever you present yourself to determines who you're a slave of, right? So if you present your, your, you know, your, your, your life to sin in some area, to pornography, to lying, to cheating, to fear, to worry, as you present yourself to those things, you present your body to them, you become a slave of that. So God doesn't want you to be a slave of sin, but here's the good news. The key in overcoming here is who you're presenting yourself to. So how do I overcome? I spend my time presenting myself to God. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. So see here, he's talking about who you're presenting yourself. So instead of trying to stop sinning, start presenting yourself to works of righteousness and doing what the Bible tells you. And then he ends by saying this. He says, for the wages of sin is death. None of us likes death. I don't like death in my life, in my marriage, in my family. I don't like death in my ministry. I like life. And so when you present yourself to sin, it produces death. So none of us want that. Well, what's the secret then? You present yourself to righteousness as a slave of righteousness. You see, you're still a slave. You're just not a slave to sin anymore. You're now a slave to righteousness, which produces holiness in your life. And then he ends by saying this, for the God's free gift is eternal life in Christ Jesus. So I want to pray for you as I end. Maybe you've never done that. Maybe you've never actually receive Christ in your life, but I want you to know that there's a free gift. It's based on the finished work of the cross and the blood of Jesus paid the price for you that you no longer have to be slaves of sin, but you can now become a slave of righteousness and walk in the blessings of righteousness. So let me pray for you. Father, I pray for everyone watching this video. If they have not given their life to Christ or if they're struggling in sin, that they begin to, uh, begin to acknowledge and say, you know what? I'm dead to sin, but I'm alive unto God in Christ Jesus. That they are no longer slaves of sin, but they're slaves of righteousness. They have the victory through through the finished work of the cross and through the fee, free gift of your salvation, which brings us eternal life. I pray that in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, hey, God bless you, my friends. Make sure you go and read through Romans chapter 6 and apply these insights to your life. In the meantime, I want you to know that the Father loves you, Jesus loves you, and I love you. Be blessed, my brothers and sisters.